All right, guys, so we're actually in the midst of something big going on right now with the AI industry and that being ChatGPT. So it's being used heavily in the online space in different fields, in different industries, whether it be from a coding space or whether it be from an animation or a blog writing. Uh, some people call this the next Google. But I've been trying to see whether this can be used for a trading department from a trading industry perspective. Uh, especially from a quant trading perspective because we can get lots of coding data and lots of information uh, from ChatGPT. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to try out different things in ChatGPT. We're going to try out different strategies or try out how to get codes, uh, see if we can get different strategies and see if we can get an efficient strategy and how efficient these strategies can be and how we can progress in the algorithmic trading industry. So. This is my experimentation with ChatGPT with trading. You can try yourself some of these things. Um, maybe you can try something better as well. Um, so uh, what I want you guys to do is just go to ChatGPT OpenAI and then just click on Try ChatGPT. And you will go into a sign-up page where you sign up all those things, your credentials, your emails, and your password, and your phone number. I think they send you an OTP and then uh, you will be sent to this page at which place you will essentially uh, write down what you want. So these are the examples, capabilities and the limitations of this software, this AI software. Uh, it's, it's good to have a look at it. So the way it works is basically you just type on something here and it answers your question. So uh, let's start with some basic questions regarding algorithmic trading strategy. So let's create something like how to create an algorithmic trading strategy let's see what they have to respond okay yeah that's pretty decent define your objective identify your market determine your time frame yeah that's crucial because we've discussed many things in the daily space and also in the weekly space uh, monthly spaces different time frames select your indicators test your strategy which is quite important um, we need to go deeper into that right so let, let's see uh, whether they can backtest the strategy. So let's see, backtesting, um, moving average strategy, and let's be more specific, 50 days. Backtesting a 50 day, or let's do a 20 day. 20 day moving average strategy in Python. Let's see what that gives us. Let's see, it's a frame, that's correct. So necessary libraries, that's like pandas, um, matplotlib, things like that, creating a function. Yeah, be trade through the rows. Uh -huh. Okay, so it didn't give us the code. I mean, I was expecting the code. So it didn't give me the code. So let's type in Python code for a 20 day moving average backtesting strategy, backtesting strategy. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, there we go. So I think the wording is quite important on how we uh, get the results. So again, the libraries have been plotted. So a map of and pandas. So it's reading the CSV. It didn't tell us specifically on how to download that data, but that's okay. Um, got the moving average, the 20 day moving average. And yeah, if price is greater than MA, then cash. It's an interesting kind of code, made it a bit complicated, but I think we should get the net profit and the results as well. So it will do the job. This is pretty good actually. So you can just copy paste this, but it doesn't explain line by line the code. Um, but I think we can go deeper into it, like for example, where to download the data, where to download stock data um, for Python. Okay, so again, you've got Yahoo Finance and Bloomberg and web scraping. Yeah, that's another uh, way to do it. There's commercial providers and all those things. So if you guys want to know the line by line way of doing it, I suggest you go to our YouTube channel and there is a video on algorithmic trading, zero to hero in Python. Um, that explains to you line by line the code completely. 
uh, we've actually got different chapters as well so you guys know how to download the data from Wi-Fi NAS and installing the Anaconda libraries and all the other things necessary to delete, resample the data one by one. So this kind of works. So if I want to get line by line data, so for example, if I want to uh, say um, Python code for downloading data from Wi-Fi NAS. Yeah, they've used the ticker function. Um, so we've got we've got lots of information from uh, ChatGPT on how to download the how to use the codes for different kinds of strategies. So now let's go deeper into it. I mean, we've got an idea on how to uh, code or backtest the strategy. We've got an idea on how to download data. So let's go deeper into quantitative functions. Let's go deeper into uh, how to apply these quantitative strategies or how to use some of the quantitative skills that we teach on our course so let's go into what is forward testing say for instance so what is forward testing applying to real time market data yep that's correct That is a very interesting point that they have uh, raised. The limitations is like trading, such as market risk and slippage. So um, there's also another minor thing that they missed. So sometimes instead of applying it to real-time data, so what we do is we do optimization over a specific time. So they've completely forgotten about the whole optimization bit. So let's go on. What is optimization in trading? What is optimization in trading yes that is correct it is adjusting the parameters of a trading strategy yes we can get overfitting so that is one of the things why we do the forward testing in order to avoid the curve fitting so what we do in our courses that we actually back test or optimize over a specific period so for example 2005 to 2010 we find out uh, which values are the best parameters, for example, a moving average or an RSI or an MA. And then what we do is that we apply in 2010 to 2012 or something and see whether it works. So that is basically what forward testing is. So even though we don't have real time market data, we can still uh, continuously do that like over a five year period or a five month period or whatever it is. So in that way, every single time uh, the parameters are adjusted uh, to the best case scenario. So even if the market evolves to a crash based scenario or a market is evolved to a trending up scenario, the parameters adjust accordingly. So that is basically what optimization is and forward testing is. So they've, um, it's not very clear, ChatGPT has not been that perfect in making you understand, but it gives you an overall picture on what's going on, what we intend to do in quantitative trading, but these kind of these minor things are missing from that. So for instance, um, adjusting the parameters of trading. So that's basically, I think this is for our MFI strategy. Um, so adjusting the parameters will be like changing the 14 day to maybe 13, 12 or 50 to uh, maybe 49 or 48 or something and seeing how it affects the results. So for this one, this is the MFI in Amazon. So we got 4,900 something. So let's change this to, let's put it eight something. So let's see how that affects the strategy. So now it has gone down to 3,443. So 14 was far more ideal. So uh, an example of an optimized strategy is found on our course for people who have done our course. Uh, it has really performed very well. It's a counterpoint strategy. I think it was the third strategy on our course. So it's performed spectacularly well. Uh, it's a mean reverting strategy uh, this year. So for example, here it's picked up the short here, it's closed here, short here, uh, took a position here. So even in the down market, it works really well. And so uh, that's one of the biggest advantages of mean reverting strategy. So if you look at the strategy tester and the list of trade, so this year it's performed uh, practice some really good trades 1.44, 2.66, 3.5. Uh, so it's done pretty well, 1.82. Uh, so for people who have used the course, I mean, done the course and used the strategy, congratulations. But if you haven't used the strategy, then um, I would suggest 
I hope you guys pick something from it and has adapted to your own personal strategies. Um, it also performed very well in the 2008 crash as well. So I think if I can go down to 2008 financial crisis, because this specific strategy, which is the third strategy and also the fifth strategy, is ideally meant for volatile markets. So you can see in 2008, it was just profit, 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 profit small loss here there will be big losses as well but there will be massive uh, profits because of the volatile markets so mean reverting strategies work tremendously well during high volatile markets so uh, rather than trend following markets so th these are some of the advantages you could do with optimization and forward testing so these are all uh, critical elements in quantitative trading so ChatGPT is kind of guiding us to that right direction which i really like i think it can really help you guys to understand things that you're not thorough about so for example if you don't know anything about quantitative trading and you uh, i say something or you hear something about it in the online space and then you want to know much about it then you know typing it in chat gpt uh, seems more convenient i think to understand sort of google because google's like giving you like 10 20 different articles and then you have to open up each article to find out oh yeah this is what that is you know rather than getting your right solution so let's do let's go deeper uh, let's do like an optimization code in python see how that what gives us see how that works out so they have used the scikit library so this is like a machine learning model so um, they use the machine classifier they've used the training data and they have used the parameters as well so um, this is different from what i saw a few minutes ago when i try to have the optimization that was pretty basic optimization but this is like they've taken it a bit too complex they've gone into a machine learning model not that machine learning model doesn't work but the problem with machine learning models is there are different kinds of machine learning models there's a q learning uh, there's a random forest then there's the xgb so there are different kinds of machine learning models some of them works really uh, okay some of them don't work really well so again they haven't specified it why they're not using this specific model as compared to that specific model. So uh, let's go a bit more deeper. So let's go optimization code uh, in Python by changing parameters, by changing parameters. So maybe this one might give us more specific code. Yeah, perfect. So this is what I was looking for really. So there's a parameter value 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 125, uh, but it doesn't specify what kind of parameters we're using. So here is just some random parameters. Um, so this strategy dot run. So we haven't decided the strategy dot run function. So that code is not there either. So these are some of the flaws, I guess, in Chat GPT. So. Uh, some of the functions so it just gives you that that small line of code but it hasn't shown us what is the run function or where is the run function where is the set parameter function let's do optimizing moving average parameters para oh. it hasn't even stated the what parameters we're changing so let's do optimizing moving average parameters in trading strategy python so i think i think the wording in in the chat GPT is pretty critical so it can uh, completely change everything so okay so this one seems far better so we've got the MA values 10 20 50 and 100 so they're trying to play around with all these values and then store the results okay this seems far more better than the other one. So th th this is one of the things that I'm kind of expecting. So this is pretty much what we're doing in our course, but uh, not like this, not 10, 20, 1500. We do it specifically for each variable. So it's like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way to whatever we're looking for. So it's like a minimum to a maximum. So it's not, it's not specified to 10, 20, 15, 100 alone. And the code is much more simpler than this one. So. This, this does the job as well so again it doesn't specify why we're just using 10 20 1500 maybe like 31 was far better than any of these values just like 14 was better than 8 in that mfi strategy as well so again chat is kind of lacking in that specific 
um, feel as well. So I think what's going on here is that they're, tra uh, they're trying to get the best uh, wording in the online space and trying to find the code and putting it right here. Uh, but unless you're like thorough with the coding uh, and understand the code, I think it might be tricky for you guys to apply it in algorithmic trading or quantitative trading bet. Uh, but still, it does the job, you know, I mean, for, for a person like me, I, mean, I can dissect the information, I can uh, leave out some of the unnecessary information. So, for instance, I want to know about, I don't use trade station, I use interactive brokers, but let's say I want to find the API of trade station API to Python code, so trade station API to Python code trading strategy. Let's see if we get simpler one. Oh, that's so we will get some of the information. So we get the API access, install the API library in Python, then you install the trade station. Oh, this is pretty good information, you know. So I don't use trade station, but if in case I did use trade station uh, API, then you know I just have to use it in Chat GPT, and that's that's pretty solid information, you know. And okay. But I'll have to come to check it in the trade station API because especially if I'm going live trading in a quantity based uh, trading strategy, you have to make sure the codes are correct. Uh, so it's good. So if you're using a new broker or something, I think this would be pretty cool to understand the Python codes for APIs and stuff like that. Um, how about let me go deeper? Uh, how can I how can I implement? I already know this, but just to see how uh, chat GPT responds to it. How can I implement my trading strategy in Python in the cloud? Lots of spelling mistake here, but let's see. <laughs> I think if there's lots of spelling mistakes, it kind of gets slower or I don't know, maybe there's like lots of uh, demand in chat in the usage of the chat GPT software. Okay, so there's Google Cloud and there's Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is pretty good. Okay, TradeStation has got a cloud-based trading platform. Google Colab or Jupyter, okay. Okay, let's see if it does PineScript code, okay. PineScript code for backtesting a 50-day moving average strategy. So we'll try it out in the bind script code as well. This is super slow. I'm, I'm quite surprised that it's getting slower. Okay, here's an example of bind script code, 50 days. So it doesn't specify it is a version four or not, but I know it's version four because it doesn't use TA. So strategy long, it's the long on the strategy. Uh, entry short position, short entry, strategy dot short, exit the and sets the look back period to 50 days. So it doesn't tell you the version. So it's version four on this one. So if you guys want to know version five, there's a full tutorial on our YouTube channel as well. Okay, anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy paste this one into Trading View Point Script. So I'm just gonna copy the code and then I'm just gonna go here. Just going to create a new strategy. So I'm going to paste this. So I'm going to save. So strategy of dream. So I know why this is not working because it's a version four. So I'm just going to do just a version four and save that. So what's the thing that's creating the issue? So there's a compilation error. So you have to do line three. Long entry seems to be the issue. So copy pasting the code simply put didn't work. So if long entry, so long entry is closer crossover, close comma MA. So MA is SMA close comma look back, look back is 50. So it is true i mean what, what's what's causing the issue oh yeah i know what's happened so what's happened essentially is that the copy pasting didn't work um so there has to be a tab here there's a tab there as well 
So again, we found a drawback in the copy pasting bit or the coding bit. So let's let's go back to this. They actually leave four spaces. They also didn't leave four spaces. So uh, this is a very common issue that happens with people while well, copy pasting codes. I think many people have contacted me as well, like they've seen errors while copy pasting. So this is again some of the issues with copy pasting codes. So even Chat GP2 hasn't figured out that every uh, platform when they copy paste code sometimes these strategies kind of get crunched up so i think it should work right now so let's add this to the chart that's the previous one so it didn't work that great i mean it did form very well initially and then it did go down so that 50-day moving average uh, long and short in the amazon did work so let's do something else let's see create a strategy in fine script that gives me 100% I mean let's do it a bit crazy 3000% return in Amazon stock if this works it's gonna change the financial space uh, for good again taking a while I guess it it's not possible to guarantee a specific level of return for any trading strategy. Okay. Simple strategy in the Amazon stock. Okay. So we've got a simple strategy. Most likely this is a moving hour 50 day. We just, we just tried that right now. It doesn't work, mate. It doesn't work. This, this doesn't work. We just tried it right now. It doesn't work, but obviously we can tweak it for our own benefit. We can add some stop loss and take profit and things like that. Mm. Okay, so let's go a bit more crazy. Let's do something like give me find script code for a long only momentum strategy. Maybe this might work because we're just doing a long only. So if we apply it in some healthy liquid stocks, maybe it might work. Oh my God, again, they're giving a 50 day, but it's kind of a uh, momentum style, which is good, yeah. So strategy or exit. Okay, calculate. So I, I'm pretty sure this might actually work. So I'm just gonna copy this and then go to Pine Editor, and then paste, save. Doesn't work because it's not version, has not been set up, so. Mm -hmm. Version equals, this is four again, the drawbacks of ChatGPT. So again, save that. Entry again, we need to have four spaces here, so just Again, drawbacks of the strategy. Again, let's do the Amazon 5. Exit long. So we haven't had a condition. If not, entry strategy dot exit. So that is not correct. So we need to have a condition of exit, which it hasn't. So it's basically done buy and hold, really. Uh, buying at the momentum and then it didn't exit so it's been holding on for a substantial period of time so let me make that change here if if closes i'm just going to create a new strategy if closes less than sma close comma 200 Strategy dot exit exit. See that close. So again, okay. So there you go. Um, so there has been certain issues here. So um, some minor situation of the code. It, it did a strategy dot exit, and then it gave the name exit. But in reality, we need to mention which specific trade we're going to close and that specific trade was the long 
So we have to write in long here and then specify the conditions. Um, the strategy performed pretty decent. I mean, we need to change this to 100% equity, obviously, uh, to get the accurate results. So it did 20,000% return. Uh, okay, that's, that's pretty decent, really. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm quite surprised by the fact, but it seems like there's like lots of trades there. Um, I think during the choppy period, so that was a 200 day moving average really. Uh, so if you do the list of trades, it's 2%, 2%, 2%, and then I'm pretty sure there should be like a massive uh, returns here and well. So let's do the performance summary. Net profit, maximum drawdown, 65%. Uh, sharp ratio. Number of winning trades, number of losing trade, percentage profit was 40. The average trade is 6%, average winning trade is 20%, and average losing trade is 2.94%. So it kind of shows why we've got some spectacular returns. But in reality, it's got 20%, 20,000 percent return. So thank you, Chat GPT, in creating that strategy. Obviously, I had to make changes to the code a bit and tweak it to my own specifications. Uh, to get that 20,000% return. Um, so I guess you can use ChatGPT to create pretty decent strategy creating a 20,000% return, but I had to tweak it uh, because it didn't give me the right code. Uh, there was drawbacks in the code, so it's not really exit here, it should be long here, so we exit the condition there. And I had to create my own rules to exit the condition to get that 20,000% return. So. I think the takeaway with the chat GPT is that it's not like one one solution to figure out some great strategies, but you can use, if you know the foundation of some kind of quantitative base, if you've got that idea on what to do and what not to do, and also I've got a bit of coding experience, I think it would be great. I think just copy pasting the strategy just like this won't work because it's, there's like lots of errors, starting from the spaces and starting from the line of code. So unless you know that specific coding language, thoroughly you might not know uh, what to do if you come across errors and you have to make specific changes like when we tried um, this one and also the other some of the python codes as well uh, some of the functions were just you know were just random we didn't know what the function does and things like that so there is no just copy pasting things but there um, there's some really great information for example like the trade station api so if i was using a trade station broker and i didn't know what to do then you know just asking chat gpt might be a great idea uh, so from those specifications i thought that was pretty cool but again i'll have to cross that cross check that with the uh, trade station website so anyways hope you guys got an idea on how to use chat gpt to learn so I think it's really good to learn quantitative trading or algorithmic trading and also maybe even value investing, which I might be doing a video soon. So let's say how to calculate intrinsic value of a company. And you might actually get some information, quality based information, because there are lots of uh, uh, information available in calculating intrinsic value. Again, another takeaway is that it's kind of slow when, it, when there's spelling mistakes, so be careful the way you type it. But overall, I think it was pretty good. You know, the whole, I kind of like that space because uh, maybe it didn't help me that much because I am, I know thoroughly about the quantitative trading and algorithmic trading space, but for people who don't know, this can be like a really stepping stone for you guys to learn lots of things in that space. And also if you have doubts in the codes, I think if you'd like type in like, what is momentum trading or what is trend following trading, you know, that could be a great information as well. Or even the Python code, you know, like for instance, you want to know what is a function or uh, what is the function used to find the average of a stock, you know, those kind of things would be pretty cool. So anyways, this one, the intrinsic value, discounted cash flow model, I think you can go deeper into it to find out what is, uh, give me an example of a discounted cash flow method stock calculation. So. Um, there is lots of room, I guess. There's lots of room to learn in this amazing new software. So try it out, see how it goes, and let me know if you guys find something interesting in this. But don't don't think that you can find like one trick solution to find a great algorithmic trading strategy. The only reason why we got a 20,000% return is because I made a pretty decent change to this by tweaking the exit condition. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Uh, thanks for watching.